This episode of TRS is brought to you by the HP DV7T with Beats Audio, featuring the smart Intel Core i5 processor. Coming up, all us users clue you in to the new film program, Tron Legacy. See what I did there? So tomorrow in movies, Tron Legacy is released. Today in movies, we are talking about it. But way back in 1982, the original Tron was released. Absolutely stunning visual effects, made a major impression on our generation. Though it wasn't a big financial success by no. any means, but it really seemed, kind of a seemed to strike a chord with um, Geeks our age, and just visually, it, there were, nothing could compare to it, even in the years since I, then. I will tell you, there were a lot of times I would take dowels, uh, the insides of a paper towel dispenser, and try to jump into a light cycle. There how were about, a how lot much, of... How, about, how much Frisbee did you play, uh, imagining? And one of my favorite toys of all time, the Tron light cycle that opens, and you slide a guy in, close it, and then put a screen the, in there, oh, and zip I it, wanted and then, that. Had oh, one. one days Mine was yellow. gone by. I think anyway. mine was yellow, actually. Or green, maybe? Anyway. So, this time around, oh, so anyway, the original Tron. Jeff, there was also a movie. Jeff, Jeff Bridges <laughs> got sucked inside a computer. It was all about being inside a computer and you know, bits and programs and users and all that stuff. Well, the sequel mm. takes a, takes place about thirty years later, and uh, Flynn's son Sam. No, no, no. Yes, right. Yeah. Um, is uh, goes looking for his father and winds up inside the uh, computer. <laughs> um, He's gonna trail shocking! Yeah. Jeff Bridges also plays uh, an entirely CG version of his younger self, mm. and uh, this is directed by jo Joseph Kaczynski, who's a uh, prolific commercial director. He actually did those very famous the, the Gears of War commercial. It was like kind of like in game with the Mad World uh, yeah. score oh, cool. from Donnie Dark. Danny Donnie Darko, Darko. Yeah. and uh, and the Halo uh, one with the it was live action. There was like the kids dreaming up at the it's called Starry Night. The kids dreaming up yeah. at the stars, and then the war happened. Um, hmm. And uh, and it's being released in IMAX 3D, and it's somewhere in between Dark Knight and Avatar's IMAX release and 3D 3D IMAX release in term or IMAX release because it's. It's not entirely shot in IMAX like Avatar, but it's way more than The Dark Knight. Right. It's over 30 minutes of it are in IMAX. I saw it in IMAX. I will tell you about that. Uh, features a score by Daft Punk. Yes. Jeff. Yes, sir. We saw you have a blast at Electronica. I did. Did you have a blast at Tron Ica. Legacy? I don't think there's any way to say it other than this movie was a huge disappointment. Um, as an audio-visual experience, very worthwhile, very worth seeing as the best Daft Punk video you've ever seen. It's worth it as a movie, as a story. It is completely, I think it fails on every level. And it was a massive disappointment to me. I think it's entirely forgettable. Uh, there are so many missed opportunities and missteps. I will reiterate, visually spectacular and fun the Daft Punk score is the star of this movie. It is absolutely awesome. There are so many things. First of all, young Jeff Bridges, I think, is that uncanny valley, like it never looks right, which is okay. You can kind of get away with it because he's supposed to be in a fake world anyway. But there's a missed opportunity there. This movie isn't about anything. It's just this hollow action film set in a really awesome designed world. But they could have been, like you have all these great dichotomies. You have Jeff Bridges' son versus this other thing that he created. So there could have been some kind of reference made to the fact that he kind of has two sons or two creations. No, there could have been this <laughs> awesome dichotomy between uh, old and young because you have a young Jeff Bridges versus an old Jeff Bridges. And what I would have loved to have seen is something about technology, about how technology has changed. Why do we not get any reference? There's even a long flashback sequence 
to a time that's much closer to when the original film is set, and that still looks like this modern vision. Why couldn't we have had awesome comp comparison between old technology, old Tron, computer technology versus new. Like we get that old tr light cycle for a second. I thought, okay, here we go. There's gonna be some kind of juxtaposition. No, there could have been, I mean, there's so many things mm. wrong with this. The, the, I didn't care about the lead character. Why does he have to be a badass in the real world before he gets into the cool world? Like why does he have to be a superhero doing superhero things already? Why can't he find that? You know, there's, there's, this movie isn't about video games. It could have been about how video games have changed. You know, like it like tried to be about piracy for a second. It's at the beginning, and then no, none of those characters yeah, came back. Uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I wholeheartedly agree. I think that this was visually stunning, and there are shots like you know the first motorcycle shot where he's right, you're like on his back of his yeah. motorcycle. I was like, yeah, and as a motorcycle guy, I was like, I, I gotta music, get home and in that scene, in that too. scene, yeah. amazing. Yeah. And then there were a couple moments at the beginning of this movie really felt like uh, the, the director was like, I'm gonna make Dark Knight. Because it's like, this was all in Batman Begins, right? The whole like standing on the precipice of the building and this like moving around thing, the, which is fine. What security guard yeah. walks out on the fucking yeah. thing? Yeah. Like regular no, Joe yeah, yeah. Oh, not like I an know. elite task of no. security. Oh, Even then. Like, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. It, uh, I lost my brain on the was, rooftop. Yeah, yeah, there was a lot of really bad in this movie, yeah. and I totally agree. I think it was a missed opportunity to have it, it be about anything. And even the thing that it was about, it really felt like Matrix 3, where it was like, oh God, we have to say all this stuff. I mean, let's, you know, in the trailer it says, he came to me with this revelation 30 years ago. He found something that was gonna change, you know, right. science and religion and everything and what we believe in the world. And, and it's like, what is that? When they say the one line of what that is, it doesn't even, it's not even that impressive. And it's nothing, it's, it's, not, it's a it, stupid sci-fi like, trope. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But it's not even, yeah. it's, it's like not even enough of a trope to be a trope. I mean, it was just like, who the hell cares about that? Whereas that could have been, even that one idea could have been, an, if that idea had been epic, that may have even saved the movie. I totally agree with the clue stuff. Every time the young Jeff Bridges stuff was on, I was like, this is, Horrible, horrible. It, that, not not the, worth um, anything. The Uncanny Valley is unfortunate with that because it makes it's very. It, it disconnects you from the story, yeah. and the, and, and he's the main clearly, bad guy, and the main bad guy. I just yeah. I felt no. The thing that I, the one real the other thing it. that I wanted to say, which is I think, in 1982, the concept of humans being ported into this virtual world was a bigger deal than it is now in science fiction stories. Now that we've had The Matrix, and now that we've had movies where humans are going into this other reality and done way better, it's almost like that concept isn't as cool as it was in 82. Well, let me, let me piggyback on this idea, because but I the, the, could the not agree. Fight sequences were amazing. We're, we're, we're all totally on the same ship here, because um, I also thought the story, interestingly enough, I thought the story was as um, as boring and convoluted as the original Tron. <laughs> the, yes. But the original Tron, had A, the amazing stunning visuals, but it, the original Tron was at least intellectually interesting mm. because there was this analog between the real world idea of what's going on inside a computer yes. and what the things we were seeing represent. They represented exactly. programs yeah, and, exactly. and things that were happening that you said, yep. oh, when I was a kid, I was like, oh, so that's what a program is. It has to do this thing because it's made to- It has a cohesive all... metaphor, right. yeah. which this movie does not have. No, this movie all. has none of that. Why are they playing games? There's no video games in this movie. There, no, but when they're doing yeah, the exactly. gladiatorial games, it, all this is is a post-apocalyptic movie. It's like Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. Yeah. Inside a yeah. futuristic why is, world. Why is um, um, Michael Sheen in this movie? The the, the world, uh, the science fiction world, and characters are completely underdeveloped. They're there to to, to present the plot to you, mm. but none of it's. In, I'm not intellectually interested yeah. in anything that's happening. I'm not emotionally interested no. in anything that's happening. The only thing I'll say is Olivia w uh, Wade or Wild. Wild. Gorgeous. Oh, sure. Stunning to look. Now, at. what is gorgeous and it. Really, as you, I've been saying all week, like you, the, the star of this movie is the score, and the visuals are astounding. Mm. The action sequences are incredible. There are too except few the, of them. Except the end short. one is a little bit 
That's so weird. But it really is impressive, and especially in IMAX 3D, this is an experience as, as bad as we've been pounding on this movie, this is a must-go see. Because it's not, it's not, it's more than just saying it's a great Daft Punk music video, though it is. It is, you don't get to see music videos like this. Yeah. You don't, I mean, this is a rare thing to and I think, experience I think Mikey, and feel. I think and also Mikey nailed it by saying that watching the Tron version in 3D of the Disney logo was worth the price of the <laughs> Yeah, game. and that's attached on the trailers. It's, better, it's <laughs> better to go see it yeah. on the big screen. Of course. But I, it I really think, is. I think you could, you have this character, this old uh, Jeff Bridges character who's kind of like Steve Jobs. He's like this well, but, old hippie who believes in stuff. And then but you have his young self who, we and don't have any understanding as to what his motivation is other than to be be perfect, which is completely undefined in this movie. But you could have had this cool thing of like, yeah. what is design? What is perfection in design? Yeah. Like, and Jeff Bridges the hippie, was the dude. And he was just this weird, kind of, like... There were so many missed opportunities. There's no, there's no understanding of how the world works and yeah, how it no. operates and how these people fit into it, which are the things that are actually... Interesting. That's what's fun about The Matrix and Star Wars. Yeah. It's like feeling Rules. the living, breathing world. And yeah. none of that is... Baked here, yeah, um, at all. Yeah. It's really disappointing, but it was. But, but go see but on go the big see. screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's ridiculous to say, but yeah. yes. <laughs> so remember to stick tuned to find out what happened today in rad history. But we do want to thank HP. Uh, the HP laptops with uh, Beats Audio have been sponsoring. This is the DV7. Uh, and this thing is a bad mamma jam. It's powered by the uh, Intel i5 uh, core, Intel Core i5 processor. Easy for uh, you to say. Although I think this one might be the i7 processor. Um, but these, the Beats Audio stuff is really ridiculously good. This has a built-in subwoofer, which is like, why do you do that? Because they're like, we want the sound as good as any notebook could possibly sound. Thank you so much, HP. Uh, let's check out some rad history. Huh? Be sure to check out tomorrow's show where we return to Media Mashup. So today is December 16th on this day in rad history. In 1928, Philip K. Dick was born. The amazing Visionary writer. science fiction author. Movies based on his books, Minority Report, Total Recall, uh, Blade Runner. I'm waiting. Uh, the Ben Affleck Paycheck. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, what I'm going to say is pick one. Oh, pick one of the best ones? Pick one, one of those? What about, um, is what about the... Total Recall, in my opinion. Gosh, what about uh, Keanu Reeves' crazy... Johnny Mnemonic? No, 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 no. The uh, one Gibson. Crazy. The animated. Oh, for Scanner Darkly. Scanner Darkly. Oh, interesting. No, that's William Gibson as well. I think. No, that is Phil no, Kidd. Yeah. Oh, so what? Uh, so Total Recall. Total Recall for me. If those. Oh, Blade Runner. Blade mm. Runner. Well, that was also sent in by Alex Bibic. <laughs> no. but, but thank you for sending in yes, if you want thank to send you. in fans of Total Also, if you are going to do, go ahead and do that. Uh, send in a pronunciation. <laughs> so we're not. Au revoir. Being terrible to you. We're history. <laughs> <laughs>